Okay, we've finally reached our final question on the paper. Um, this is a functional question, but it's also going to be a bit of an algebraic fractions question. So to start with, we want to work out f of 5. So that all that means is I'm going to replace the thing in the bracket here, the x, here and here, with 5. So the first fraction is going to be, uh, my apologies, 1 over 5 plus 2. The second fraction is going to be 1 over 5 minus 3, which is 1 over 7 plus 1 over 2. So some of you, this is on the calculator paper, so some of you just reaching for your calculators now to check it. But we can easily do this. This could come up on a non-calculator paper. Um, the common denominator is 14, so adding those functions together is 9 out of 14. Okay, so that first bit is relatively straightforward. This second bit asks us to write down the value of x which f of x is not defined. Well, it's a bit of a weird question, but they only really ask it whether well, it only makes sense when you put algebraic fractions with x values on the bottom as the denominator. So just a little thought, that if we can make those denominators 0, if we divide by 0, our calculator doesn't like it. That answer is not defined. So that's the phrase from the question. Our calculator will say math error. Now, that doesn't mean you've input it wrong. It doesn't mean syntax error. It means there's a math error. It means it's not defined. So we want to find the values where the, the bottom of either one of these fractions is going to be to give us a zero, so we're doing divide by zero. Or you can have a look at that first one, a value of x equaling minus two, will make the first fraction divide by zero, which is a mess up. Or you could say you can make the second fraction mess up, divide by zero, by saying x equals three. So there's two options, and it says write down a value, so you can pick one or the other, it doesn't matter which. Both both of them are going to mess this up. So that uh, they don't they're not allowed to take the function, they're not defined. Let's look at the last bit. This is where things get a little bit tasty. So I've written down the function here, and I've got the um, I've got to say I've told that this function now equals four, it's given a specific value, and I want to find the answers for x. So I'm told that 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3 is equal to 4. So I want to write, I want to sort these fractions out. I want to write this under a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is this first fraction, I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 3 and the bottom by x minus 3. The second fraction, I'm going to multiply the top by x plus 2, and the bottom by x plus 2. And then what you'll see is that I've got uh, the same denominator now. I've got the same denominator as a double bracket, I've got x plus 2 here, and x minus 3. Could be different around, I suppose, it doesn't matter. So we've now got a common denominator, and we know this equals 4. Let's work out the numerator. So I'm going to do this 1 times this bracket, which gives me 1x minus 3, and I'm giving, multiplying this bracket, which just gives me uh, 1x plus 2. Now we've just got to be a bit careful here. If either of these numerators here and here weren't 1, we'd have to multiply these brackets out appropriately. And also, if this if the operation between or the, the, the sign here would be minus, that would make things a little bit more tricky on top. So we have to be careful of our negative signs there. So, if we look at the numerator, the numerator simplifies to 2x minus 1. I've got 4 over here. Well, I've got, still got this denominator here. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this denominator and I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by it. So I get 4 brackets x plus 2 brackets x minus 3. And now this is starting to look a little bit. We've got kind of rid of some of the fraction bit now. So I've got this equation here. 
is equal to 4 lots of, and then if I multiply this bracket, these double brackets, but leave the 4 outside, I've got x squared minus x, 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, or if I now keep the 2x minus 1, but multiply everything in here by 4, I get 4x squared minus 4x, and 4 times 6 is going to give us, or 4 times minus 6, minus 24. So finally, I'm going to sort all this out, and this is going to give me a quadratic, which is 4x squared um, minus 6x, add one to this side, minus 23. So I will try and factorise this, but annoyingly I can't divide by anything, because there's no common factor, and 23 is a prime, so the only way to split 23 up is into 1 and 23, and I can't make minus 6 from that. So, and there's also a hint in a question. They've given you this here. So they say they want the answer in this form. And this is a third form, so we should instantly think, aha, we should think of x is equal to minus b, that's right, the quadratic formula. We should think minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4x, <coughs> minus 4ac, excuse me, all divided by 2a. So let's think. Our a is worth 4, the thing in front of the x squared. Our b is worth minus 6, the thing in front of the x. And our c is worth minus 23. So all I've got to do is substitute these numbers into this expression here. So x equals minus b, well this is already a minus, so that becomes plus 6. Plus or minus the square root, now I'm going to give myself enough space here, of uh, b squared, which is going to be 36, minus 4 lots of my a and my c. And I've written it out like this, so that I don't make a mistake on my calculator with my plus plus and negatives. You can actually tap it with the with multiply signs or with um, brackets like this, all divided by 2a, which I can do, which is just 8. So, what I get was, if I just simplify it slightly, I get 6 plus or minus, if I work this out, this bit's going to be a positive, so it's going to add to 36, so it's the square root of 404, and all divided by and what I'm going to spot is, hopefully I don't want that space underneath, that 404 is really root 4, root 101, all divided by 8. And that is going to be, that's the same as 6 plus or minus 2, square root 4 is 2, square root. 101, all divided by 8. Now if you just compare this to what they've got, they've got one number before the plus or minus, a single square root, no number outside it, and then a single number underneath. So we've now got a spot, there's a factor of 2 here. So we can divide all of these things by 2, so it gives us 3 plus or minus the square root of 101, all divided by, divided this by 2 as well, 4. And then our p will be worth 3, our q, the thing inside the square root, is worth 101, and our r is worth 4. It's quite a tricky question, it's quite involved. Eight more question over this is really quite a lot of marks. Have a, if you need to, pause it or rewind it and go back over it.